Hello, random smart person on the internet. Have you ever wondered how we know how long ago an animal lived? You hear scientists say that T-Rex lived 66 million years ago, or that trilobites first appeared in the fossil record 521 million years ago. How do we know these things? Do we just guess? Do we roll a d20 and hope to get a natty 20 so we can determine the age ourselves? It turns out that we can determine these facts using chemistry, physics, and math. The exponential decay rate for a chemical element is the change of the number of protons with respect to time decreases at a rate proportional to its current number of protons. Turning this sentence into a math problem gives us a first order linear differential equation of dn over dt equals negative kn. This is known as the exponential decay law. We want to get all of the like units, in this case is the ends, on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side. This will make it simpler for us to use. If you remember from algebra, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. To get the ends on one side and everything else on the other, we will need to multiply both sides by dt and divide both sides by n to get 1 over n dn equals negative k dt. We will now use what we learned in calculus 2 to take the integral of both sides. This gives us the integral of 1 over n dn equals the integral of negative k dt. Solving for the integral on both sides, we get the natural log of n equals negative kt plus c. Again, remember back to calculus. If you want to get rid of the natural log, ln, have e, also known as Euler's number, as your base and raise it by both sides. This gives us n equals e to the negative kt plus c. At this point, think back to your exponent rules. If you have a base raised to an exponent, and the exponent has addition in it, it can be rewritten as n equals e to the c times e to the negative kt. We want to use this formula to create another formula for the number of protons we have when time equals zero, or when it first formed. So we plug in zero for t, and we get n at time zero equals e to the c times e to the negative k times zero. Anything multiplied by zero equals zero. So we get the formula n at time zero equals e to the c times e to the zero. Anything raised to the zeroth power equals one. And anything multiplied by one is the original number. So we get n at time zero equals e to the c. We can now substitute this back into our original formula, and wherever we see e to the c, we can substitute n at time zero, or the number of protons at time zero. So the formula for exponential decay is n at some time, t, equals n at time zero, e to the negative kt. Now that we have used some math, it is time for us to do some chemistry and physics. The half-life of potassium is 1.25 billion years. This doesn't mean someone waited around 1.25 billion years and watched half of a set of potassium to decay. There are methods to determine half-lives that I will cover in a future video. When a set amount of potassium decays, 11% will decay into argon, and 89% will decay into calcium. Since argon is a noble gas and doesn't react with anything, if any argon is found in the rock, we can be confident it came from the decay in potassium. To find the specific constant K for potassium argon decay, since we know the half-life of N at time zero will remain after 1.25 billion years, we can use the formula one half to the N at time zero equals N at time zero E to the negative 1.25 times 10 to the ninth, which is 1.25 billion times K. We divide both sides by n to the zero, and we get one half is equal to e to the negative 1.25 times 10 to the ninth times k. We now want to get rid of Euler's number, so we're going to take the natural log of both sides. We get the natural log of one half 
equals negative 1.25 times 10 to the ninth times k. The natural log of a fraction is the negative natural log of the reciprocal. So we can write the natural log of one half is equal to negative natural log of two. Plugging that back in, we have the negative natural log of two equals negative 1.25 times 10 to the ninth times k. We divide both sides by negative 1.25 billion and we get natural log of two over 1.25 times 10 to the ninth equals k. And simplify, we get k is equal to 5.545 times 10 to the negative 10. We have found the specific k for potassium argon decay. So the entire formula for potassium argon decay is n at t equals n at time zero e to the negative 5.545 times 10 to the negative 10 times t. Remember that it is also known that for every amount of potassium that decays, 11% will decay into argon and 89% will decay into calcium. For dating rocks, we will focus on the amount of potassium and argon that is in the rock. A paleontologist finds a rock slab with a dinosaur fossil in it and brings it to us for testing. The rock slab is determined to have 50 grams of potassium and 0.5 grams of argon. He wants to know which period the dinosaur lived in. Is it the Triassic period, which is from 252 to 201 million years ago, the Jurassic period, which is 201 to 145 million years ago, or the Cretaceous period, which is 145 to 66 million years ago? To start off, we take the amount of potassium we have, 50 grams, and plug it into our equation. So that gives us 50 equals n at time zero, e to the negative 5.545 times 10 to the negative 10 t. Now to find what we had at time zero, let's use what we know. We know that when potassium decays, 11% will become argon. Therefore, to find out how much potassium was there originally, to make the argon, we take the argon we have now and divide it by 11% and then add it to the amount of potassium we have now. So that gives us n at time zero equals 50 plus 0.5 over 11%. So now our formula looks like 50 equals 50 plus 0.5 over 0.11 times e to the negative 5.545 times 10 to the negative 10 t. To solve for t or time, we divide both sides by 50 plus 0.5 over 0.11. This gives us 50 over 50 plus 0.5 over 11 equals e to negative 5.545 times 10 to negative 10 t. Take the natural log of both sides and we get the natural log of 50 over 50 plus 0.5 over 0.11 equals negative 5.545 times 10 to negative 10 t. To get t, or time, by itself, we divide both sides by negative 5.545 times 10 to the negative 10. And we get t equals the natural log of 50 over 50 plus 0.5 over 0.11, all divided by negative 5.545 times 10 to the negative 10. I don't expect you to do this by hand. So plug it into your handy dandy TI-89 titanium edition calculator and solve for T. And this gives us an age of 157 million years for the rock slab. This means the dinosaur found in this rock layer lived in the Jurassic period. This method is extremely valuable to scientists that date rocks and find fossils in those rocks. Instead of taking a wild guess about how long ago an organism lived, we can use math, chemistry, and physics to determine the actual ages when that species lived. You may have always been curious on how scientists determine when dinosaurs lived. Now you can actually derive the formulas and do the math yourself. This scenario was a slight oversimplification of what paleontologists must do to determine the dates of the fossils. Most of the time, they have to date the layers directly above 
and below the fossil because the rock that the fossil is encased in is not the proper type of rock to be dated. Paleontologists also do not date the bones themselves. They have to date the rocks. And then by extension, we know when that dinosaur died, but the math, physics, and chemistry are still the same. So there you have it. You turned a word problem into a math problem, into a chemistry and physics problem, back into a math problem, and solved it. We have learned how scientists determine when an organism lived. I hope you learned something new today. If you made it this far, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching. If you're interested in computer hacking, check out my brother-in-law's channel, PhD Security, and watch his cyber videos. Or if you want to veg out and watch a gamer girl who just so happens to have a master's degree in theoretical physics from the Imperial College of London crush video games, check out Sassy Assy's channel. Both of the links are in the description down below. Whatever you do, just remember, have fun with STEM.